From parasites that love brains to sneaking into eggs, here are nine terrifying parasites that control their victims. Number nine, brain infesting parasite. The estuaries and salt marshes along California's coast are home to Euoplorus californiensis, a brain infesting parasite that begins its life inside the horn snail. From there, it enters the water and begins a terrifying journey. It searches for its next host, the killifish, where it spends the next stage of its life as a cyst on the fish's brain. This causes the host to swim in unnatural ways by going in circles, traveling near the water's surface and otherwise acting erratically. An infested killifish can still swim with the same strength and speed as an uninfested specimen and can also reproduce and obtain enough food to stay alive. But its bizarre behavior attracts predators, making the infested killifish 10 to 30 times more likely to get killed and eaten. In order to reproduce, E. californiensis must relocate to its third host, the shorebird, which commonly preys on the killifish, especially one that's swimming around like a maniac and making itself easy to catch. Once eaten, the parasite makes its way into the shorebird's gut where it lays its eggs which are deposited through the bird feces. At this point, the cycle starts all over again with the horn snail eating the shorebird's feces and ingesting the parasite's eggs. Researchers are unsure how the parasites became so adept at controlling their host's behavior. Some believe they may release chemicals that affect an animal's nervous system, while others believe that simply being infested with parasites is enough to stress an animal out to the point where the behavior changes dramatically. Number eight, brain-eating amoeba. Commonly called the brain-eating amoeba, Nagleria fowleria is a single-celled organism with a particular fondness for human brain tissue, resulting in a devastating condition called primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM. It typically finds its way into the human host via warm, stagnant, freshwater bodies. Right, I'm already horrified, are you? In its most harmless form, N. fowleri spends long periods of time as a cyst in varied conditions, including hot, cold and dry weather. But once the perfect host comes along, it transforms into something called a trophozoite and makes a beeline for the individual's nervous system. Humans typically ingest the parasite through their nose while swimming or diving in infested waters. Once consumed, N. fowleri works its way into the brain and causes PAM, which is usually fatal according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The disease is rare, but out of 145 cases recorded in the US between 1962 and 2018, only four people survived. Sadly, most patients pass away within 18 days of contracting the parasite. You scared of ever going in a warm pond again? Now tell me your opinion. I don't think I'll ever swim anywhere that's not chemically treated anymore. Number seven, green banded brood sac. Leucochloridium paradoxum, also and much more simply called the green banded brood sac, is among the nastiest of all parasitic flatworms. It starts its life cycle in larval form after its eggs are deposited through bird feces, which amber snails then come along and eat. Once inside its new host, the worm begins to grow, eventually making its way into the snail's eye stalks, where it builds fat, throbbing brood sacs. This causes each tentacle to take on new colors, including emerald, maroon, and charcoal, and a pulse resembling a squirming maggot. Infected snails behave abnormally, spending more time in open, well-lit places and making itself a target for predators. Once a bird comes along and gobbles up the snail, the parasites mature inside its body while feeding on its waste and depositing their eggs through the bird's feces. As unpleasant as this sounds, there is a bright side. Unlike some of the more deadly examples of parasite, the hosts tend to survive being infested. That's lucky, I suppose, but you probably still wouldn't want to encounter these creatures. Number six, rabies. Almost everyone has heard of rabies and knows that it's dangerous and to avoid it at all costs by getting their pets vaccinated and staying away from wild animals who may be infested. Rabies kills around 50,000 people worldwide every year. Because it's not transmitted easily, requiring actual physical contact with an infested specimen, it is not considered one of the planet's deadliest diseases to humans, but otherwise it would be. Once symptoms appear, rabies is almost always fatal. It starts by entering the bloodstream and turning cells into virus factories, multiplying by the thousands and eventually reaching the host's brain and nervous system. Restlessness and aggression, including violent behavior towards people they are otherwise familiar with, are some of the first symptoms to appear in animals with rabies. 
People, on the other hand, begin to experience an irrational fear of water called hydrophobia, accompanied by difficulty swallowing and involuntary twitching. Patients ultimately fall into a coma and asphyxiate, choking to death on their own blood or saliva, or die from serious heart complications. There are less than 10 documented cases of unvaccinated humans surviving clinical stage rabies infections. Have you ever encountered a rabid animal? What happened? Tell me the story in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't for more amazing videos. Number five, zombie cockroaches. Most humans, at least those who have dealt with cockroaches personally, tend to think of them as one of the most resilient life forms on earth. That's true to some extent, but nothing in nature is infallible, as you're about to learn. Found throughout the tropical regions of Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Islands, the jewel wasp, or Ampulex compressor, uses certain cockroach species as a host for its eggs. Female wasps take a two-pronged attack, first by injecting the cockroach with a specially evolved venom that paralyzes the bug, rendering its legs immobile. Then, she administers a dose of the chemical mixture to the cockroach's head altering its brain function and metabolism. Once the cockroach can no longer move, the jewel wasp grabs it by the antenna and drags it to a burrow where she lays one or two eggs between the insect's legs before exiting the burrow. The cockroach eventually regains its mobility, but has lost all its survival instincts and remains in a zombie-like state. On her way out, the wasp blocks the entrance off with debris to protect the burrow from predators. Around three days later, the eggs hatch and the larvae feed on the incapacitated roach for the next four or five days. During the final stage of their development, the larvae devour the cockroach's internal organs and then chew out through its abdomen, emerging as fully developed wasps. The jewel wasp is just one of many wasp species who rely on neurotoxic venom to manipulate other species into facilitating its reproductive processes. Number four, sleeping sickness. Trypanosoma brucei is a microscopic brain-infesting parasite carried by the tsetse fly in sub-Saharan Africa, where two other similar parasites are known to spread. One of them causes a slowly progressing version of African trypanosomiasis, a disease commonly known as sleeping sickness throughout the continent's western and central regions. The other species? Well, if you're hoping that it was friendly, it's not. It lives in eastern and southern Africa, and it causes an even more acute version of sleeping sickness. Symptoms vary depending on which version of the disease someone has. For example, East African trypanosomiasis comes with a painful bite that produces a sore called a chancre, and it has a much quicker onset, with symptoms typically progressing over the course of weeks. On the other hand, Chancres are not a symptom of West African trypanosomiasis, which can take as long as three years to run its course. Primary physical symptoms include fever, severe headaches, extreme fatigue, and swollen lymph nodes. Mental effects consist of irritability, confusion, and personality changes. While a low percentage of tsetse flies carry either of these virtually indistinguishable parasites, and while sleeping sickness is treatable, it is fatal without proper medical care. But there's good news. Efforts to curb the disease have case numbers at historical lows, numbering around 2,000 annually, a significant improvement from the 10,000 reported cases in 2009. Number three, Chagas disease. Also known as American trypanosomiasis, Chagas disease is spread through blood-sucking insects called kissing bugs. Discovered in 1909, it occurs mainly in rural and impoverished areas of Central and South America and is spread through the parasite Trypanosoma cruzi. In the disease's early stages, symptoms are often absent entirely or are mild and may include fever, swollen lymph nodes, headaches, and swelling at the location of the bite. The acute phase lasts anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. But even if someone feels fine, it's dangerous to let the condition go untreated because then it becomes decades long and in some cases lifelong and potentially life-threatening. Many, if not most people, do not experience symptoms even after entering the chronic stage of Chagas disease. A minority of sufferers, between 20 and 30%, experience cardiovascular complications such as an enlarged heart, heart failure, altered heart rate and rhythm, and cardiac arrest, including possible sudden death. Gastrointestinal symptoms are also possible, including an enlarged esophagus and or colon, and difficulty eating and going to the bathroom. People with weakened immune systems are susceptible to rare but deadly side effects, as one man learned in 2018 when he became confused and lost his ability to walk. 
He came to the emergency room where doctors learned he had recently been diagnosed with HIV and AIDS, which had caused a previous Chagas disease infection to reawaken in his brain. After two weeks of intensive treatment, the man's condition began to improve. In cases where it's too late for antiparasitic medications to eliminate the invasive presence in someone's body, they may have no other choice than to receive treatment for managing the disease. While Chagas disease does not hijack a person's mind, it may stop the person from living a normal life and may require pacemakers, heart medications and other potentially life-saving treatments. Number 2. Mind Control Wasps Female wasps of the parasitic Glyptopantelles genus deposit up to 80 eggs at a time into young caterpillar hosts. The next few stages of the caterpillar's development continue normally while the larvae feed on its bodily fluids. Once fully developed, the larvae eat through the caterpillar's skin and leave its body, at which point they find a branch and form a cocoon. The caterpillar survives the ordeal but does not resume its normal behaviour. Instead, it safeguards the larva's cocoon like a bodyguard or a protective parent, not even leaving to feed. Once the adult wasp emerges, the caterpillar's work is done and they die. Scientists are unsure how this process is so perfectly timed and executed, and until relatively recently, they could not prove that the caterpillar's deaths were anything but coincidence. A research team at the University of Amsterdam got to the bottom of the mystery in 2008 when they placed both infected and uninfected caterpillars near these parasites' cocoons and then introduced a stink bug to the scene. The infected caterpillars thrashed wildly, presumably to protect the cocoon from the stink bug, while uninfected specimens barely reacted to the stink bug's presence, if at all. The scientific community hailed the breakthrough discovery as the first documented case of parasites manipulating their hosts into behaving protectively over the parasite. And the study also found this relationship is exclusively beneficial to the wasp and does nothing for the caterpillar. What do you think of this bizarre and spooky mind control technique? Number 1. Toxoplasma gondii you might find it alarming to hear that as much as half of the world's humans are chronically infected with a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. This single-cell organism is one of the world's most common parasites and infects many, if not most, warm-blooded creatures, including humans, causing a condition called toxoplasmosis. Kind of makes you wonder if you might be carrying this invader without knowing. It reproduces in the intestines of cats who deposit the parasite's eggs through their feces. The eggs are then picked up by rodents, who act as intermediate hosts and form cysts on their body and brains. This causes rats and mice to be uncharacteristically unafraid of cats, making them more vulnerable to feline predators. People become infected with the parasite through exposure to infested cat feces, mother-to-child transmission during pregnancy, and by eating undercooked meat. Thankfully, it does not have the same mind control effects on us that it does on mice and rats. Many humans exhibit no symptoms at all and have no idea they're even infected, while some experience flu-like effects like fever, fatigue and muscle ache. People with compromised immune systems are at risk of experiencing more severe symptoms of toxoplasmosis, such as seizures, lung problems and blurred visions. Babies are also more vulnerable to the parasite and can suffer from jaundice, seizures and severe eye infections, and pregnancies of infected women can result in miscarriages or stillbirths. But fortunately, people who are relatively healthy and who are not pregnant can mostly continue with their lives as usual with a toxoplasmosis diagnosis. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. See you for the next video right here on Epic Wildlife.